G'day, it's Dave, out and about with Dave. And today, we're just south of Yalabin at Lee Reserve, and we're camped on the side of the Jumaresque River. So we've got a lovely little camp spot here, campfire going. And there's the Jumaresque over there, another campsite. And here with me is one of my good mates, Travis. And Travis, tell us about what we're having for dinner tonight. We're gonna to have a roast something. Lamb. Lamb. Mm. Lamb. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a roast lamb, and Dave has asked me to uh, assist with that. Well, how are you going to do it? Well, we're going to do the old camp oven thing. We're uh, on the little fire over there is getting us ready some coals for for a bit later on. So what time is it now? Half past two. Yep. So just about dark, we'll be uh, hoeing in, I'd imagine. Sounds good. Well, we'll keep you in touch. We'll probably send some photos and whatever else and uh, see how we go. Cheers. So you're not going to any glazes or any sort of special things on it? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm, Bearing in mind you're limited in my larder. I am very bushy when it comes to the old camp oven. If it ain't meat or potatoes, yeah, well, maybe I potatoes. the occasion pumpkin. I did forget the potatoes. Oh, goodness. We got, oh, hang on, we've got sweet potatoes. Oh, it's close. Carrots? Yeah. 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 So Travis, we've got a perfectly good fire over there and yep. you're doing something here. Yep. What are you doing? If you think about the oven you've got at home, its major benefit is that it can circulate the heat around itself, yeah? And what most people do is I'll grab a camp oven and I'll sit it on top of that. And that just became a really cumbersome frying pan, which is nothing like an oven at all. So what you want from a camp oven, and the reason it's got that dish on the top, is that where the heat comes from. It circulates within. So this fire over here is to keep the bottom thermally insulated by having warmth there, but not too much direct heat. You want the direct heat to come from the top of a camp oven, you can turn the roast over. You just want that to be above 60 degrees at the bottom of the camp oven. Right, yeah. So yeah, we're just creating a nice hot spot here on the ground to put the camp oven on and then we'll bring the coals over from that fire and uh, yep. cook her up. So Excellent. yeah, that'll, that'll preheat the ground, you get a little bit of ash and coal, yeah. we'll add a little bit of coal on top of that, but yep. it's just so that it, you don't soak that heat straight yep. out into the ground. Sounds good. So it's now four o'clock and we'll see how we go further. Roger Dodge. Cheers. You're standing over here now, you've got this way, you've come back to this one with the camp oven. What are you doing here? Okay, because cast iron is such a thick metal and because of the way that metal works, it soaks up heat and holds heat really well. So just like at home when you preheat your oven, you want the oven to be at temperature when you put the meat in there. So you want most of the heat in the lid, hence why the lid is upside down on there because okay, you don't yeah, want yeah, the ash yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So when I first put coals on that lid, I'm not putting coals on a coal onto a cold lid. piece of metal and then trying to heat that. So the, it's a more efficient use of coals because the coals aren't burning the way a fire works when you put them on top of there. So if that lid's already hot, they're just keeping it hot and warming it up a little as opposed to trying to heat something from cold. Excellent. Well, we'll see how we go. And we got a little thermo thermometer there. We can use that infrared thermometer. So we'll see what sort of temperature's running at. So we're ready yet, Travis. We've got the lamb there. Yep. And we've got this uh, camp oven now heating up nicely. I think I just took the thermometer on it, the, the uh, temperature gauge, 180, 190. Mm. That's probably what we're after. Yeah, and for the people at home, that it's nine minutes ago that we last shot video. So in nine minutes, we've got to a stage where the camp oven is ready to accept uh, whatever we're going to put in it for this yeah, time. Yeah, you've got a preheated oven. Yep. Yeah. So if you, if you did, it, did it the other way, you put a cold lump of meat in there and a cold everything else, it will be struggling to bring that Pushing temperature up, uphill, yeah. especially yeah. in the core of the meat, whereas this will sort of do the opposite. Excellent. Travis, you can introduce me now to a term you call dropping the meat. <laughs> uh, yeah, we talked about that off camera, but um, essentially I'm going to put it in there with the fat side down to uh, aid the fat to render. Normally you would roast the other way. Um, but I'll just do that for a little while and then I'll turn it. Okay. And then we let it sit. Sounds good. So here's our 200 degree camp oven. So lift this up and we'll look at investing in a different tong uh, lid lifter that I'll uh, talk about later on. I like what it, your one sounds like. Yeah. 
Our web base guys, uh, Pat and Bruce, they make uh, little uh, lid lifters with a little clamp on them. So we'll, I'll show you that and probably provide a link at the end of this video. Here's a little twist. That looks pretty good. So whenever I um, pull the lid off, I'll give it a twist. And that helps get any of the ash that's around the edge to not fall in. But at the same time, we're in the bush too, so it doesn't really, really matter, does it? All right, good. So when will we see that again? Oh, about five or six minutes, we'll flip her over. Okay, right here. Yep. Cheers. We'll do that. Okay, Travis, it's been about five minutes now. What are we doing? So we're going to lift her off. She should have rendered most of that fat and seared it and sealed it quite nicely. Sounds exciting. Having all sorts you of trouble here. You have to buy one of those lifters, mate. That's it. Right, so a little twist and lift. Ooh. Balance. So that's not good. You just nicely sear in there and yep. the moisture coming off. So you see how there's barely any fat left there. Yeah, yeah, the fat's gone. So we've got juices in the pot. Yep. Oh, oh. So what's up now? We're going to put the oil in there. We just give it all sort of... Uh, a nice bit of lubrication. Yeah. Alright, so we asked before, what are we doing now? How long are we going to, when are we going to see this next? Uh, we'll give it half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we'll give it a poke with something sharp, a skewer or something like that, or a knife, and see if blood comes out. Then we'll make a call from there. So what's half an hour? That's not cooked. No, no, it's no. just the first check. Yeah, just the check. I expect around 90 minutes. Yep. But it's quite a small roast, so it may go a bit quicker. Yeah. The beauty of doing a roast up like this is just the two of us. It's a fairly heavy, light, light, a fairly heavy roast. But uh, we can have lunch tomorrow. We can have roast beef sandwiches. Roast pork, roast lamb, I should say. Sorry. Roast lamb sandwiches for lunch. Um, you know what my mum nice. used to call them? She'd call them lambwidges. Language. There you go. Walter Travis's mum, languages. Good old Lois. So Travis, it's uh, now about an hour after you um, put the uh, lamb on. Yep. And what have you done? You've got the uh, vegetables in here now, have you? I certainly have. What have we got? Can I give you onion? No, no. So we've got some pumpkin, big lumps of pumpkin in there. Yep. And uh, some carrot and, and some, some sweet potato. Sure. That sounds good. And the way I'll always do it is the, the vegetable that's going to take the longest to cook, in this example pumpkin um, being the bigger pieces, that's what I put on top where more heat is. From the lid of the from the lid of the, of the yeah. Pump oven, yeah. And I've put carrot at the bottom because carrot doesn't mind being in the juice, whereas like if you put potatoes at the bottom, they won't get that crispy roast potato, yeah, they'll you be get more that like soggy. a boiled potato. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. Well, it's not too late to put some onion on and we'll do that now. Go for it. So, Travis, it's the appointed witching hour, 6 o'clock. Yep. What have we got? Well, for those younger folks, I'll say something about tossing a coin to your witcher. Let's see how she looks. So it's been how long since we checked? Uh, what is it, half past five? So, yeah, half past five, past five. Well. Ooh, look at that, look at the onions, look at the pumpkin, look at the sweet potato, look at the lamb. Let's smell these fumes. That smells nice. Mm. Well, we better do the poke test. Oh, the poke test, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the poke test. See, it's six o'clock here now, winter times, so it's pretty dark. So if the juice comes out clear, we are in the clear. That's good. That is scrumptious to do Alright, well let's serve her up. That's it. So that's just over two hours? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Here we go. Oh, you're such a presentation whiz there, Trey. Ah, one for cooking, one for looking, or something like that. So what have we got in the bottom there? We got some lovely juices, I see, Travis. Yeah, Look that's the jus. All that. The jus. 
Le Jeu. So what are we going to do with that? I think you're going to get something special in mind. I am going to make a pan gravy with that. It's quite a dark jus. You can see there that there's quite a bit of fat in there and everything else, but that'll emulsify uh, just oh, nice. Yeah, you emulsify, that's yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just nice. Emulsified fat is always good. <laughs> It's the only way to have it, really. Okay, Travis, I've never made gravy from scratch, so what are you doing now? So, we use the pan juices. I'll get you some light for that as well. So that's just flour and water, 50-50, and that's the pan juice. So, yep, yep, yep. I'll mix this into a bit of a paste, a bit, bit, bit better than toothpaste. Okay. Then I'll put that in there. Okay, fire away. Mix Go for it. Around. Go for it. Just more. That's just warm water out of the kettle that I bought yeah. earlier on. It's not cold or not boiling. It's... It doesn't need to be anything specific. Mm. All the heat will come from the camp oven. And the juices are, I don't know, they're probably 60, 70 degrees now. So they will cook this flour for lack of a better explanation. Okay. So to me, we're sort of making like a pizza mash out of this stuff now. Yeah. And if you pay the attention now and get all the lumps out, you don't get the lumpy gravy. And you'll note, Hence I'm not- the slotted spoon. Yep, I'm not doing- God, I'm glad I packed the slotted spoon. I said to myself this morning when I woke up, God, I'm glad I packed the slotted spoon. <laughs> now you'll note, there's no gray vox or any of that stuff. You don't, you don't need it because all the flavor is in there. So Let's I... see where the magic happens now. It enough, but you see how thick oh. that is. <laughs> and that there's no heat that we haven't got the stove no, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't ask me how many teaspoons or milliliters. It's just yeah, like it's it. yeah. Now, if you want to get really cunning, and the kids are still out playing or whatever else, slice your roast up, bang it in there, and it'll stay beautiful and warm for probably 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah, if we're with a group and they're still have this walk, you can yep. pick it up and, yeah. And I suppose worst case, so you can actually put it back on the heat too, couldn't you? Just a, yeah. just a bottom heat and... Yep, just back and, on those. Yeah. Oh, these are beautiful. Look at that carrot, that's... Yeah, I snuck a carrot, oh, that is so, so cool. What's yours one there? But yeah, those uh, onions, I mean, they're just falling apart. Right? That's close enough for me. I'm not a pedant when it comes to gravy. That was good. Okay, well we'll carve it up and we'll eat it. And... All right, so we're now two hours 15 into it. It's quarter past six and that's what the lamb looks like cut up. And you can imagine what that's going to be like on pita bread tomorrow as a wrap or maybe even as a, a jaffel tomorrow night. We'll see what happens when we go into the national park. We've got the vegetables over there. Yeah, right, they're over here. And uh, we're going to serve it up now and have a great dinner. So, and with the gravy. And I'm not going to do any more video. This is the end of it because I'm going to enjoy this with my rum and coke. So, uh, cheers and thanks, Travis. Beautiful. Thank cheers. you. How is it, Trav? It's pretty good. It looks good in the darkness, even. I'll bring it up mine over to the light here. Look at that. Tell me what. It doesn't look like it's serving at a restaurant, but uh, it's in the bush and it's uh, lamb and it's roasted. Bye. Bye.